Hey everybody, welcome to the GMG Review on Ash, and today I'm here with Codex Supplement Raven Guard, um, the fourth in a series of supplements, if we're going alphabetically, <laughs> for Codex Space Marines from Games Workshop's Warhammer 40,000. Um, now you do need the Space Marine Codex to be able to use this supplement, but what this adds is the Stealth Master Rules of the Raven Guard, Raven Guard with the 19th Legion, um, founded during the Horus Heresy in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. Uh, and they excelled at uh, sort of like ambush, special commando style fighting. Um, and this book reflects that in its rules and background. So let's crack it open. And of course, see them fighting the Tau, because they're always fighting the Tau in the Damocles Gulf. That's the big MacGuffin for them. Uh, that's why they were in the previous edition of Kill Team's box art cover. And um, the, Dam the Damocles Crusade sees them going and doing lots of fighting. So let's flatten some pages and offend some people, because it's... It's how you get to see the book. <laughs> so what's in the book? Um, we've got basically the history of the chapter, chapter organization, first through 10th companies and descriptions of how they work. Uh, the armory, the rise of the Raven Guard, their history, like the Massacre at Istvan, all the way through um, Korax's sort of like silly experiments trying to rebuild his legion. He decided he was gonna go play um, Gene Alchemist, and it didn't go very well, and he made a bunch of monsters that got loose in the basement of his apothecarian, and then he had to lock the doors and go kill them all himself, and it made him very sad. And that's part of that's part of the story of the Raven Guard. And then now when the moon rises over, over the planet, and then they live on a moon called Deliverance, they hear howling in the basement, and things, the first company goes and guards the doors. These are the, these are the burdens of the Raven Guard. <laughs> so, all the nice new miniatures all painted up, of course, we got all the, the new stuff like the, um, the, the Vanguard um, Space Marines are obviously kind of a perfect fit for this chapter because they uh, exemplify stealth tactics and ambush and sort of like are like the Rangers uh, along with like their, their cool Invictus battle suits and all that stuff. And here we go. So uh, this is a 64 page book of it. Uh, I think probably eight or 10 pages are actually rules. Uh, the rest of it is gonna be this wonderful background for the chapter, the organization of the chapter, all its various companies, one through 10. And then the history. So there you go, chapter command in the armory and the history of the Raven Guard. So going back to the Horse Heresy, um, how he got found. And piece, the basic McGovern for the Raven Guard is they're liberators. They overthrow like a bunch of tyrants on their planet who are using um, slaves to, to mine this giant moon that they end up living on. He ends up basically like crawling through the air ducts of this thing as a kid and killing all the guards and leading a little revolution. Uh, and yeah, Liberation of Quintus, all their. All their current sort of like deeds, Warzone Damocles fighting the Tau, the Fall Prefecta, and a little bit about Corvin Severox, the Master of Shadows. This is the current Master of the Raven Guard, and he's been so for quite some time. Uh, they follow a little thing, uh, like a path, um, uh, of like a tradition sort of like for their fighting. It's like three, three different principles for fighting, and he's like the master of them. Uh, more art, more pictures of the cool new models. And there he is, Caven Shrike in his background. Yeah, Master of Shadow, Chapter Master of the Raven Guard now. He's the current Chapter Master. Um, and, and he flies around in a, in a spacesuit and has lightning claws and shoots pistols and has the most talked about haircut of any Warhammer 40,000 miniature, I think, in the history of the world. Because uh, it, was, it was worth discussing, <laughs> I guess. And also a beaky, a Primaris Marine beaky helmet, which I thought was super cool. They brought that back. Um, some of the new incursors all painted up with their cool Jody LaForge visors. And Lemonier Sergeant with a bolt carbine. I, they did a weird, like, kind of quasi Sky Earth metallic thing on these, which I thought was funny for a bunch of stealth guys that they would give them ultra shiny weapons. That doesn't seem very stealthy. I don't, I don't know why you would give them ultra shiny weapons, but they painted them that way. Uh, here's the repulsor tanks, and my favorite successor chapter, which is the Raptors, because they're actually they've they've painted them an odd green here. They used to be like in more of an OD green. A military like uh, all of drab camo and uh and now they're in like kind of like a pea soup green so i'm not really sure of it but that's my favorite success chapter of the raven guard and then they give a whole page to the the iron ravens who have they look like iron man like they have like a crazy like silver blue and white like a, i don't know man <laughs> like it's particularly that 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 dreadnought that redemptor dreadnought they just look weird with like that bright red gun i don't know these guys are maybe they didn't get the stealth memo or maybe their, their colors turn off on their armor when they're, when they're trying to hide. Uh, lovely full spread of Strike Force Strike. And we're into rules. All right. The Master of Shadows. There's only one unit for this army, and that's Cave and Shrike himself. He is the Master of Shadows. Um, he's 130 points. 
Uh, he has a 14 inch move, 2 plus, 2 plus, and then strength on his 4, 6 wounds, 6 attacks, leadership 9, and a 3 plus save. He's got Blackout, which is his uh, pistol. It's a pistol 2, strength 4, minus 2, 2 damage. It's like his little, like, uh, assassinator pistol. Uh, this weapon can target a character, even if it's not the closest unit. When resolving an attack made with this weapon, a wound roll of 6 inflicts a mortal wound in addition to any other damage. The Raven's Talons, which is little baby lightning claws. They, like, retract. He's got, like, little Wolverine arms. Um, and they are uh, user strength, minus 3, 2 damage. When resolving an attack made with this weapon, you can reroll the wound roll. And then Frag and Crack Grenades. He's got the good old Space Marine Angels of Death rule, also a song by Slayer. Uh, he's got Chapter Master, so you can reroll hit rolls for attacks made by models in friendly Raven Guard units with a win six. Diving Charge, after this model finishes a charge move, select an enemy unit within one inch and roll a d6, and a four plus take a mortal wound. Four plus involve for his Iron Halo. Grab Shoot, so you can deploy him anywhere on the table. Uh, during deployment, you can set this model up in low altitude. If you do at the end of your movement phase, you can set up this model anywhere in the battlefield more than nine from the enemy. And Wing Deliverance, you can reroll charge rolls made for Raven Guard Jump Pack and Raven Guard Phobos units that are within six of this model when the roll was made. So he's a pretty good dive in and stab, support other diving stabs. I, you might see a bunch of Smash Captains following this guy around to get their rerolls. Because, um, yeah, being able to reroll the roll. That's pretty great. Big color section. More pictures of them fighting the Alpha Legion because the Alpha Legion and them are equally sneaky. They're the flip side of the same coin, 19 and 20. And then we're into abilities. So what is the tactical, sorry, what is the special ability for taking a Battleforged um, Raven Guard army? Well, you get Surgical Strikes. When this tactical, sorry, wh while this tactical doctrine is active, while the tactical doctrine is active, sorry, when resolving an attack made by a model with this ability against a character, you can add one of the hit and wound rolls. So, real good at killing characters. That's neat. Um, watch out knights who have relics. Because <laughs> you're all characters, and that's going to be bad. So, Real good at killing knights, apparently. Plus one hit and wound. All those five pluses becoming four pluses or whatever. Uh, and then all the keywords for doing successful chapters and how they can take things. And then we got our Warlord traits. Uh, Shadow Master. Enemy units cannot fire Overwatch at the Warlord. Master of Ambush. At the start of the first battle round, before the first turn begins, if this Warlord's on the battlefield, you can select one friendly Raven Guard infantry unit from your uh, on the battlefield. Remove that unit and set the Warlord, sorry, end this Warlord from the battlefield and set them anywhere in the battlefield more than 9 inches from the enemy deployment zone and more than 9 inches from the enemy models. Um, if both armies have this ability, roll off to see who doesn't. Swift and Deadly, friendly Raven Guard units within 6 inches of this Warlord can be chosen to charge even if they advance or so run charge. And then Master of Vigilance, when resolving an attack made by a melee weapon by this Warlord, an unmodified hit roll of 6 inflicts a mortal wound in addition to any other damage. Um, feigned flight. When this warlord falls back, they can move across models and terrain as if the models and terrain were not there. In addition, this warlord can shoot and charge and turn when they fell back. And then Echo of the Raven Spire. Once per battle, at the end of your movement phase, this warlord can vanish into the gloom as if they were, if they are more than six from any models. When it does, move it from the battlefield and then set this warlord up again at the end of your next movement phase, anywhere on the table, more than nine from any models. If the battle ends and this world is not in the battlefield, it's destroyed. And then Caven Trake has Shadow Master. He has the no ambush, or sorry, no, no overwatch for him. Which is nice. We're into Relics. So Relics the Raven Spire, these are the ones that only the, um, the actual chapter gets, unless you want to use the Shard of Istvan, whatever special. It's, it'll be called something. It'll, it'll be some kind of um, command. Not, it'll be, won't be on this page. It'll be the next one. It'll be a, a stratagem for doing it. Token of Brotherhood is what's called in this, this one. The Ebon Claws, models equipped with two Lightning Claws only, uh, replaces them. They are user strength, uh, minus three save, d3 damage. When the bearer fights, it makes one additional attack with this weapon. In addition, when resolving an attack made with this weapon, you can reroll the wound roll. The Armor of Shadows, when resolving an attack made with a weapon that has an armor protection characteristic of minus one against a model from your army with this relic, that weapon has an AP of zero. In addition, when resolving an attack against a model uh, from your army with this relic, an unmodified hit roll of 1, 2, or 3 always fails. The best you can hit him on is a 4+. plus. That's amazing. Uh, against, like, super, like, stabby guys, too. The Raven Skull of Corvad. Once per turn, when resolving an attack made by a model from your army with this relic, you can reroll the hit roll, wound roll, or damage roll. In addition, if a model from your army with this relic is destroyed as a result of an attack made by an enemy unit, then at the end of the, till the end of the battle, Resolving an attack made by a friendly Raven Guard unit against that enemy unit, add one to the hit roll. It makes people mad if you kill them. 
The Raven's Fury, jump pack model only. A model from your army with this relic can be chosen to charge even if they advance this turn. When a charge roll is made for this model, you can reroll the dice. In addition, after that model finishes a charge move, you can select one enemy unit within one inch and a four plus take a mortal wound. X Tenebris, model equipped with a Mastercrafted Bolt Stalker, sorry, Mastercrafted Stalker Bolt Rifle, Mastercrafted Oculus Bolt Carbine, or Mastercrafted Instigator Bolt Carbine only. And it replaces them, the following profile. Range 36 inches, Assault 3, Strength 4, minus 2, 2 damage. Can target a character if they're not the closest. You can add one to the hit roll. Uh, in addition, when resolving an attack with this weapon, they don't get the cover for a saving throw. And then Oppressor's End replaces a combat knife. Yay, you can give this to the combat knife leader. <laughs> Uh, it is plus one strength, minus two save, one damage. When this bearer fights, make additional attack. In addition, when resolving an attack against a character, it's damage three, because he's going to cut your throat. Special issue war gear, so adamantine mantle, five plus rune shrug, artificer armor, two plus save, five plus invul, mastercrafted weapon, plus one damage, and it's a relic. Digital weapons, uh, additional attack that if it hits, makes a mortal wound. Uh, Shadow master's cloak, three plus invul save, while they're wholly on a terrain feature. That's pretty cool. Uh, the Silentus Pistol. Models are equipped with a bolt pistol or heavy bolt pistol only. It replaces it for pistol 2, strength 5, minus 2, 2 damage. This weapon can target a character, even if not the closest, and you can add one to the hit roll. Corvidari Bolts. When you give this model, uh, when you give a model this relic, select one bolt weapon from Codex Space Marines that models are equipped with. When that model is chosen to shoot, you can choose that weapon um, to fire Corvidari Bolt. If, sorry, Cor Corvidari Bolt. If you do when choosing targets for that model, and then when choosing ranged weapons, that weapon's range characteristic is increased by 6 inches, and it can target units that are not visible, but only one attack can be made with the weapon. The Shard of Istvan add one of the attack characteristic of a model with this relic. In addition, when a, model, a morale test is taken for a character unit within 6 of a friendly model with this relic, it's automatically passed. So, free fearless. And we're on stratagems. So infiltrators for one CP. Use a stratagem at the start of the first battle round. Before the first turn begins, select one Raven Guard infantry unit from your army that's on the battlefield. That unit can move as if it were your movement phase. That unit must uh, end the move more than nine from enemy. If both players have unit can do this, roll off. And each unit can only be selected for the stratagem once. The Raven's Blade. Uh, use the stratagem at the start of your charge phase. Select one enemy unit on the battlefield until the end of that phase. When a charge roll is made for a Raven Guard unit from your army, you can reroll the dice if that enemy unit was the only selected target of that charge. Stranglehold for two CPs. Use the stratagem at the start of your first battle round before the first turn begins. If your army includes any Raven Guard Scout or Raven Guard Phobos units. Until the end of the battle round, you can roll 1d6 each time you spend a command point, uh, your, each time your opponent spends a command point. To use a stratagem and on a 5+, plus, your opponent must spend an additional command point. Or else that stratagem has no effect and cannot be used again. You can only use a stratagem once per battle. So you can basically lock down, if you have a scout unit or a Phobos unit, uh, your opponent's strats. And then two CPs for false flight. Use a stratagem when a Raven Guard unit from your army falls back. That unit can shoot and charge this turn. That's two CPs. One for Lalo the Tyrants. Uses, that's, a, that's, a, that's an AOS uh, Stormcast ability. <laughs> Use stratagem when a Raven Guard infantry unit from your army or a Raven Guard uh, biker unit from your army is chosen to fight in the fight phase until the end of that phase. When resolving an attack made by a model in that unit against a character that's not a vehicle or against a unit that's not a vehicle and contains models of the wound characteristic of four or more, add one to the wound roll. One CP if you see but remain unseen, use a stratagem at the end of your turn. Select one Raven Guard unit from your army that did not make any attacks during the turn until the start of the next turn. When resolving an attack made with a weapon against that unit, subtract one from the hit roll. So you basically camp somewhere and, and get like hard to kill. One CP for Strike from the Shadows. Use a stratagem during deployment. Select one Raven Guard infantry unit from your army. You can set up that unit in ambush instead of on the battlefield. If you do so at the end of your movement phase, you can set that unit anywhere in the battlefield more than nine from enemy. That's infantry only. One CP for Vengeance of Istvan 5. Use the strategy when a Raven Guard unit from your army is chosen to fight in the fight phase. Until the end of that phase, when resolving an attack made by a warrior, or sorry, a model in that uh, unit against a War Bears, Iron Warriors, Night Lords, or Alpha Legion unit, you can reroll the hit roll. Because you hate those guys because of Istvan 5. You've got Ambushing Fire for two CPs. Uh, use the strategy at the start of your movement phase if the ta tactical doctrine is active. Until the start of your next battle round, when resolving an attack made with a rapid fire assault weapon by a Raven Guard model from your army, on an unmodified wound roll of six, the AP characteristic of that weapon is improved by one. 
Use this once per battle. Two CPs for decapitating blow. Use a strategy when an enemy warlord is destroyed by an attack made by a Raven Guard unit in your army. Until the end of the battle, subtract one from the leadership of enemy units. Because you make an example out of that guy. That's two CPs. One CP for a deadly prize. Use a strategy at the end of your turn. Select one objective marker that's within three of any Raven Guard infantry units in your army and not within three of any enemy units. The next time an enemy unit ends a move within three of the objective marker, roll a d6. On a two to four, they take d3 mortal wounds. On a five plus, they take three mortal wounds. You cannot use a stratagem on the same objective marker more than once per battle. One CP for force their hand. Use a stratagem after your opponent generates tactical objectives. Select one objective marker in your opponent's deployment zone. If you control that objective marker and there are any Raven Guard infantry or biker units from your army within three of it, you can select one of your opponent's tactical objectives. That objective is discarded and your opponent generates a new one. You can only use this stratagem once per turn and only if the mission you're using uses tactical objectives. One CP for Strike from the Skies. Uh, that is, use the stratagem at the start of your charge phase. Select one Raven Guard jump pack unit until the end of that phase. That unit can be uh, chosen to charge with even if it advanced that turn. And when you charge, add one to the result. Master of the Trifold Path for one CP. Use a stratagem after nominating a Raven Guard character model. It's not named character to be your Warlord. You can generate one additional Warlord trait for them. This must be done, uh, so this must be from the Raven Guard Warlord traits. All of the Warlord traits in your army must be different. You can use this once per battle. One CP for Favor of the Raven Spire. Use the stratagem before the battle. Select one Raven Guard model from your army that has the word Sergeant. They can be given a relic from the following list. Masscrafted weapon, digital weapons, Silentus pistol, or the Corvidary bolts. All more relics must be different in your army. And then one CP for Token of Brotherhood. You can take one of the Raven Guard relics for your successor chapter. And now we're into the Umbromancy. Man, they are, they're just coming up with all kinds of mancies in this. The Umbromancy Discipline. So this one is Umbral Form, Warp Charge of 5. If manifested until the start of your next phase, you get a 4 plus invul. Uh, number 2, Enveloping Darkness. Has a Warp Charge of 7. If manifested, select one enemy unit with an 18 invisible. Until the start of your next psychic phase, that unit cannot fire Overwatch. And when resolving an attack, they get minus 1 to hit. Number 3, Spectral Blade. Warp Charge of 5. If manifested until the start of your next psychic phase, this psychic's strength characteristic is equal to their leadership. Woof. In addition, until the next uh, start of your next psychic phase, when resolving an attack made with a melee weapon by this psychic against a unit whose leadership is lower, they have an AP of minus four because you just you're stabbing them with mind swords. Number four, Shadow Step. Uh, the <laughs> Shadow Step is a warp charge of seven. If manifested, select one Raven Guard character unit from your army within eighteen. Remove that unit from the battlefield and set it up anywhere in the battlefield more than nine from the enemy. The Abyss has a warp charge value of six. If manifested, select one enemy unit with an 18 invisible to the Psyker. Roll 3d6. For each four plus, that unit suffers a mortal wound. If any models in that unit are destroyed as a result of a psychic power, or this psychic power, subtract one from their leadership characteristic until the end of the turn. Because you make them scared because they look into the Abyss. Number six, the darkness within, warp charge of six. If manifested, select up to three enemy units within 18 of the Psyker. Roll one D6 for each of those units, adding one to the result. If uh, the Psyker test is more than 10 on a four plus, I'd take a mortal wound because you make them scared of themselves. And that's it. On the tactical objectives and Raven Guard name generator. Oh, let's do it. I love it. Silly name generators. All right, here we go. First name is 65, Crafen. 35, Kazmorin. Yep, that sounds like a guy who would go start an industrial band. <laughs> Try again. 43, uh, Corifei. Mm, 22, Corifei Clade. Yeah, literally, literally all sounds, uh, all of these name generators are going to sound like they're from different industrial bands in the 90s. Um, that's great. <laughs> and that's it. Page 64, all done and wrapped for uh, the Raven Guard. So, Hope you enjoyed that first look at the supplement. Obviously, it's giving you the stuff to add on a Codex Space Marines, so you're kind of just adding flavor to your army. Um, and a nice new Cave and Strike model. The Chapter Master gets a, a nice new miniature for the first time in a long time. His old Hadouken miniature, or sorry, his Tiger Uppercut miniature. He's doing the old Street Fighter Uppercut. Um, is kind of long gone, so it's nice to have a new one. So, hope you enjoyed that GMG review. This look at uh, Codex Raven Guard. Of course, if you want to check out the Iron Hands one, if you haven't yet, you can go back up here in the cards um, and click the link and go and watch it as well. So, we'll see you next time for more reviews. Till then, Ash. Have a great day.
I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below to get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Deathway Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.